Welcome into Overtime, presented by McDonald's. Do Daily along with John Bruce for episode 21 of the podcast. Today we're going to take a look at everybody's favorite time of the year, the district round. This one mm-hmm. for the majority of the fall sports. We'll talk a little bit of football a little bit later on mm-hmm. in the week. But for this one, we'll talk uh, volleyball, boys and girls soccer, and a little cross country as yeah. well. So it uh, should be a fun one. We're getting to that point where some medals are going to start to be Handed out, and some memories mm-hmm. are going to be made. A lot of good games on tap this week. Yeah, it should be a really good week. Um, you know, I, I can't wait to talk about cross country because it confuses me. Um, so that's uh, just kind of my preview for cross country on that. Uh, one thing I will say, it's spooky movie season, which is why we got Jack Skellington out here. <laughs> um, also, I watched a new modern classic. Do you have Hulu? Uh, yes. It okay. Came with my little Spotify student thing yeah. or something. So I got a suggestion. I know you won't watch it, but if no. you like horror movies, oh, check out, no. check out Slother House. Um, it is about a sloth who, uh, more or less is poached and then sold to a girl at a sorority house and it ain't happy about it. And it slothers people. There we go. Yeah, well, it's awesome. The The first... Uh, 4.8 out of 10 on IMB, IMDb. Yeah, I would give it about an 8. Like, it's so funny. It's so bad. Like, the puppets are the puppets really bad, but it's the first... Uh, oh, it's new. Yeah. August it's, 30th, 2023. It's only about a month, about two, two months, months old. Now. Yeah, I just, I just saw it uh, Friday night. Um, as you know, my insomnia was kicking in and I'm, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, what is this? This looks terrible. And oh boy, it made me laugh. So so that's all that matters. Not a big horror movie guy. I'm not either, but I got into this thing on a website where it was like, watch a horror movie a day for the month. I'm like, I'll try it. And it, it ain't going well. Um, so (laughs) yeah. So, but at least I, I giggled some at slother house. Yeah, when I was young, like E.T. is not even a scary movie, and that movie terrified me. <laughs> like I could, I. You're not a big alien guy. No, like whenever they had him in the uh, little, um, not, I don't even know what the you want to call it. Like basket. Little, no, not the basket, but uh, when they were like all oh, corn. Whenever they had the little quarantine things oh, happen, yeah. he was like all white and gross. Yeah, dude, that like freaked me out. Yeah, like I couldn't be al- like it was whenever I was like three or four, like. I like if I got left alone, like I'd be freaking out just because I thought ET was gonna come out and get me or something. <laughs> so there was a movie called Monkey Shines, which apparently is like the worst horror movie. Like everything I've heard about it is it's just tremendously bad. But the preview for it had a little toy monkey that just sits there with two symbols mm-hmm. and plays it. And that was like the entire trailer. It's and- rated better than Slotherhouse. That's six point two out of ten on oh. IMDb. Nice. That's sixty. Oh, oh that's said, a, oh, 53% rotten tomatoes, which I've never even understood. Yeah. Like well, what that's that's whatever. Uh <laughs> but uh yeah, so I was so scared of monkey shines that when the Bambi re re release came out when I was literally five, I wouldn't go see it. Like I would really be like screaming, crying because I did not want to get. I didn't want to see monkey shines. I didn't know if they would accidentally put it on the screen. I wasn't smart enough to know that that doesn't happen. <laughs> All right, there's well, your movie preview for uh, the week, episode twenty one. There we go. Uh, so let's just take a look. It's also relatively early in the morning on Sunday, so yeah, uh, we're filming this a little earlier because your boy is taking a trip on the eastern seaboard. Are you um, going east? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. We're going heading to south. A, heading to Maryland. Maryland. So, yeah. There you go. And then we're going to like DC, New Jersey, Philly. So I'm going you're gonna go to the AL or AL, the N L C S. I thought about it, but uh I game drop about game one was four hundred and sixty two dollars to get in. Um I don't have that. Hey, you just hit at the yeah. casino the other day. Uh, just drop it all Yeah, off. but that's got a I had to make a car payment. <laughs> so <laughs> that already went towards that. And, uh yeah, so if anybody wants to Venmo me some money, get at me and maybe I'll go. I think that's on Monday, so that's when this will come out. So. Yeah, that's true. So maybe they'll be done by then. <laughs> I think we're probably going to D.C. on Monday, but we'll see. All right, so let's... You're s- D.C. St- I am. So let's start things off with uh, the Division Two um, 
tournament in the district. Sheridan, Marietta, Fairfield Union, and New Lexington. Fairfield Union, really the only area team we have left mm-hmm. in D2. It's pretty competitive, that match yeah. on uh, whenever that was. I think it was Wednesday. Yeah. It was when that Fairfield Union and Yoda match was. It went to five. It was great. Fairfield Union jumped out 2-0. Unioda came back. What well, The final score was, it was 15-13, and so that's as close as it can get without uh, taking any uh, – or going into a uh, extra, yeah, what did we call it? Extra, oh, ext- yeah, without yeah. going into an extended set. So yeah, and then uh, I just saw Christian Thompson shockingly broke another record, which was she got thirty nine kills in that match. I think her previous high was thirty seven. I think it's up. I think it's three times now this year because it was yeah. originally thirty. I think, yeah. and then it was like thirty three, and then. Maybe it's yeah. been four. It's been a lot. Yeah. She probably has the record for most records broken yeah. in a single season. Yeah. I, it was my first time getting to see her in person this year. I saw her last year. Um, and maybe I didn't appreciate it as much last year, but like, I'm pretty sure she can jump higher than like how tall we are. Mm-hmm. Like, we're short kings, but I mean, I'm like 5'11. Yeah. It's under six bad. foot yeah <laughs> but like man she gets up and when she gets up and meets the ball at its highest point like there's nothing you can do about it so i was really impressed with her uh you know battled back there down 2-0 and um yeah it was just a really really good match um you know it's one of those hate to see anyone lose but like as our Derek webb said it's like just this division two is just a complete gauntlet because new lexington who's a six seed beats uh, Circleville in five, five yeah. um, who was a very good team, and Circleville beat uh, Fairfield both Union times, twice. I both think, times. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I was going to look at. It's, it's like, yeah, New Lexington's a six seed, Fairfield Union's a seven seed. I think those games are going to be at Southeastern, is yeah. where they're at now, because it's the district round. And you know, for Fairfield Union, they picked up a good win over Union. Now their second time beating them this mm-hmm. year, but you got to play a team that just took down a team that beat you twice in mm-hmm. league play. So we kind of get robbed of a third msl matchup between those two teams but uh should still be a fun match monday night between those two teams and i mean i would assume sheridan probably beats marietta although that looks like it could be a pretty good matchup as well as i think new let or excuse me marietta is like 22 and one or 22 Mm. and two and i don't know if sheridan has lost their their girls programs are so good (laughs) like they're always but like especially in recent years as well, but um, I do know their coach. I'm pretty sure was coaching in Louis Vuittons a few years ago. Like they were real high heels, and she was very, very good. Like you could just, it was one of those like you could just tell it's just a really good coach. Um, so that's uh, yeah, Marietta 22 and two, Ooh. Uh, but Sheridan, they play Sheridan 21 and three. Yeah, so five losses between the two teams, and Sheridan did not lose. Uh, any conference games they're in the muskingum valley i'm assuming it's Big. conference or league yeah. or something but uh muskingum valley league it is yeah. okay and there's nine i'm assuming nine teams because they played 16 league games so you play mm-hmm. each team twice so yeah so new lex is actually in that conference but i i'm not 100 percent sure if they're in the same division because it got split a few years ago and that's the conference that has the best mascots because it has the philo electrics the Crooksville Ceramics, Tri Valley Scotties. Um, so they've played, they played New Lexington once. Once, okay. And it was their very first match of the year. Beat them three one. Okay. And it was at New Lexington. Yeah, John or excuse me, Riverview, Marys or not Marysville, Maysville, John Glenn, Philo, Tri Valley. Yeah, we played we played West Muskingum. Shocked in Meadowbrook yeah. team we saw last year. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming Meadowbrook must have run. Well, I guess they're in a different division than yeah. D three. But Meadowbrook had a big run last year. Mm-hmm. Did they make it? They made it to the state tournament, didn't they? Yes, because they won that regional final against uh, uh, South Webster. I believe yeah. it was. So. Yeah, they're uh, also, really good volleyball over there. Shocked just straight up. <laughs> Just straight up robbed the Chiefs logo. They just uh-huh. they just threw a CR in there instead of uh, yeah. is their mascot. I love the Meadowbrook mm-hmm. mascot. That it's is cool. The, yeah, it's a good mascot. Um, is the Kasha- I'm assuming the Kashakton or something with an R. Yeah, Redskins because it was CR. Yeah, the Kashakton Commanders. Yeah, they have a they have a, the Kashakton school team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the they, have, they have a really volleyball cool, team. They have a really cool gym. Um, yeah, we went there a few years ago to watch, uh, John, uh, John Glenn play 
and like where we were at, we're like, oh man, these guys aren't very big. And then they go out on the court and we're like, man, these guys aren't very big. And then they hit like seven threes on us in the first quarter. And we're like, it doesn't matter that they're not very big. They're really good. So I will say, I, I'm assuming, well, I don't know. I'm assuming somebody will be there tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Derek will be there, but if not, Brock potentially. I don't know. Are there, are there any other games going on tomorrow night for soccer or anything? Uh, I believe soccer starts tomorrow. So, actually, uh, they're both going to be covering soccer tomorrow. So, nobody will be at the volleyball Not game? at that one, but... Okay. Um, Unless we send, like, Garrett or potentially Carson. Yeah. Maybe. I know we have a couple other guys that are able to contribute. Yeah, um, so... Um, I, I think gonna, I think with us only having the one team in it, I think they may wait until. All right, if you can go somewhere else where there's a doubleheader for like soccer and there's, you know, if it's two games, four area teams, then it makes a little more sense for our purposes. But uh, hopefully, Fair Food Union able to pick up a win mm-hmm. and uh, move yeah. on to the next round. <laughs> Although it's going to be tough either way because you're going to have to beat New Lex and then you're going to be rewarded with Sheridan or right. Marietta. So, uh, but, but they're definitely one of the more talented teams we've seen and just knocked off a Uniota team that we've held mm-hmm. pretty highly throughout the whole year. Yeah, and I think um, – I don't remember who I was talking to after. It, it might have been uh, um, Adam Detweiler who, who does a lot of stuff at Uniota with uh, – like he – spilt a bunch of stuff over there and really helped out the programs mm-hmm. a lot of different ways. I think he may have, he coached the wrestling team. I'm not hundred percent sure if he started the wrestling program, but I know he's coached it for a long time. And, um, he kind of said, you know, when you have that one great player, you can really, uh, make a big time run in the tournament. And that's something that Fairfield union has been able to do. And, um, I think they also, they have some, you know, other pieces that do a really good job for them as well. Um, obviously you look at Thompson, um, but it's a, uh, it's definitely a more well-rounded team than I expected when I saw them in person. All right. So we'll look to division three. Now we've talked about it a lot, especially for volleyball. That's where most of our area teams mm-hmm. lie, especially when you get to the tournament play is division three in our area is pretty heavy. I mean, you have teams like South Webster, Wheelersburg and Adina who at least for the past you know, five, six years have been pretty talented and mm-hmm. have made it to these district rounds. And I mean, Adina made it to a final four a yeah, couple South years Webster ago and South well. Webster's done it. Uh, and then Wheelersburg, I mean, it's just yeah. kind of any girls sport. They're mm-hmm. typically, they're typically right. uh, threatening in the district round. So uh, three districts for us, or I should say well, three different districts this Saturday. Well, that's the finals. We have right. the semis. I believe those are Wednesday. I don't uh, remember exactly. They kind of go they, all. They actually go because there's three different. Oh, they're not the final. The semis the, aren't all the same day because they're all they're all at Waverly High School. So not the yeah. downtown gym, the high school up on the hill. Um, they play. Actually, they start Monday, then they go Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Then they come back for the final on Saturday. Yep. And so that way, everyone has the same break as well. So, and I'll just go ahead and say we we're gonna have all those games live streamed. Obviously, now we don't know what the teams will be. Uh, safe save Southwest are probably going to be one of them. But uh, those three games, I think it's first game at 11, then it's just a roll start after that. So you guess probably like two hours for each – or two hours, so it's probably like 11, 1, and 3. But uh, matches can go over, matches can go under. It's a roll start, mm-hmm. so those could start a little bit earlier or a little bit later. Uh, but we will have those on live stream. I'm assuming uh, that graphic will be put out probably Thursday. Yeah, once the teams are set. Right. Uh, but for the first one, as we're labeling Waverly one, I think that's how. Uh, yeah, we just went. Yeah, went too. off the state thing. I wish they had cooler names like <laughs> but, I mean, Tiger Town. Yeah, Tiger Town one or something like that. But uh, in that one, it's South Webster and Alexander, and then Federal Hawking and Megs. So similar yeah. to D two, really only one area team there. I mean, Alexander is close. They're in the TBC, and I think they're closer than Athens is. Yeah, cover Athens, which is a little funny. So. But, uh, which I'll actually, after this, I'll be driving down that way going on 32, but it's home of one of my favorite stretches of road signs mm-hmm. because there's so many roads that turn onto 32 from like 50 and different mm-hmm. roads. Uh, there is like an Athens and Albany sign cause Albany is where Alexander is. And it's like 13 miles, five miles. 11 miles, three miles, 10 miles, two miles. It's so ridiculous because it's just so many times right after another. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, Alexander is actually, it is closer. Uh, I believe they would be the team 
in our general area that has actually won a state championship in volleyball most recently, but it's been about 10, 15 years. Um, and you know, they, the TBC doesn't necessarily get a lot of love in our area. Like we don't really see them very much outside yeah. of really Benton County. Uh, and sometimes Nelsonville, I'm like um, Athens was yeah. up at ZT the other day for soccer. But. Right. But, like, if you look at this, we thought this was going to be South Webster versus Alexander, which, you know, is happening. But Farrell Hawking and Megs knock off Portsmouth West and Menford. So, that was surprising. Like, to me, and wow. I believe they were both quick. Megs swept Menford. Yeah. And West, West and was four. Fed Hawk went to five. Oh, okay, went to five. Okay. But. Um, that's surprising. I didn't realize that until just now. Yeah. That's, that's so when I was wild. when I was like putting this together, I was like, wow, I, I forgot that those two weren't highly seated. So, yeah, Meg's, I mean, I mean, Meg's knocking off a seven seat in Minford three zip. That's yeah. That says very a lot impressive. about how under seated they seemingly, they were 25, 13, 25, 22, 25, 21. So yeah, took care of business in set one and then just rallied off back to back, uh, three and four, I'm guessing they're called points, yeah, but whatever. Point wins and yeah. sets two and three. Yeah, so I think South Webster's probably pretty heavily favored in this mm-hmm. district, but yeah. at the same time, you know, Men- Men- yeah. Menford and West were at home right. too. So it's not like like Fetter Hawkins not at as far because it's in it's in Athens County, but Megs is not an easy drive. Um are you getting the map out? No. Oh, okay. well, where was it? I can. <laughs> Pomeroy. Megs um, oh, Pomeroy to where? Uh, I believe it was Menford. Oh, to Menford. Yeah. Pomeroy to Menford, 116. Oh, okay. Not that bad, actually. Um, but still, it's, um, you know, a good trip. And, you know, kudos to those teams for making it. But I think the Jeeps just are, are more They're well-rounded. Yeah, yeah, I think that they have a excellent chance to make it beyond this level. And then um, the interesting thing is, I believe that the teams can actually pick which one of these they go to because then it'll seed them out to the regional. So where South Webster must have liked whatever the one was, um, because you can pick that way if, say, you want to avoid the team in the East and you're the one seed, you can pick, like, say, Waverly 3. Oh, you can pick which district you play yeah. in? Yeah. So that, All right, that yeah. So I think you'll notice that, I think when we get to, like, soccer, I think it it's a little different because I think um like one of the teams has to play the central first and it's like mm-hmm. well you want to put that off as long as possible or you want to do it as quick as possible depending on your strategy on that but um yeah i think south webster's probably the heavy favorite in this yeah. it's not too often you have a 19 and an 18 seed playing in the district yeah. semifinal. And the, the funny thing is is if alexander were able to knock off webster you'd have a 12 and 18 or 19 right. district final which I, I don't think that happens too often i know not to like home or this but i know union and gallia basketball my senior year it was like what was it like uh, five and 12 or something no, in the district final it was or eight we were something. the seven yeah it was like and they were like 15 they were the they wouldn't have been the 15 they were the 14 they were deep, because yeah. hillsborough was the three yeah and beat seven, them. seven and <laughs> seven and 14 in the district yeah final. so you, you never know in the tournament and that's where and that's where you know we'll maybe we'll talk about it a little in the football episode but it's like when you get more teams in like teams have a, if you have a chance things can happen now they aren't they aren't guaranteed but i would like i think most of the time that happens when like a team is heavily underseated is when and like i know they just lost but when you have a team like portsmouth west who they're good they just had to play wheelersburg and south webster mm-hmm. four times this year and they're gonna suffer from that whereas right. you have a team like fairfield who you know not to dog on them but you know they they dominate their league, but outside the league, it's it hasn't right. been great. And you hit you get them as like what, what were they like a three seed or something for volley? Mm. Or no, they were a little bit lower. They were like ten, a little I lower, think. yeah. But traditionally, say that's like a four seed just because of how good their overall record was. They matched up against a West team who I don't know what their final record was, but I'm assuming they lost six or seven mm-hmm. matches. And you know, just, it's simply just because their league play was a lot tougher than right. other leagues. Now I don't know how the TVC is. Uh, right now in volleyball because as you mentioned it's not our most it, it, i'd say right. it's probably our least covered t- uh, league in our coverage mm-hmm. area so like i know f- even for us we didn't really touch like we didn't pick winners or 
uh, any like right. predicted uh, impact players for the yeah because like TV we we cover teams. less than half of the league yeah I know it's, even though we do have to drive past Alexander yeah, to get make, to make to get to sense. two of the teams that we do cover but um but yeah I think well and then you mentioned that the league records we'll talk about that in Waverly too actually with mm-hmm. one of the teams so we'll just go ahead and jump right in there. Uh, Waverly 2, another one of the TVC teams that we actually do cover. I think there's four. I think it's Venton County, Wellston, Nelsonville, and Athens, I mm-hmm. think, are the main four. Uh, but it's Nelsonville, York, North Adams, and then two SVC schools in Southeastern and Huntington. I'm assuming the league record slash overall record is going to be with North Adams. So well, it was actually... North Adams and Huntington. And Huntington. Yeah, because Huntington. They've had is, some big non league. Yeah, games. Huntington's 14 and 8. They went 6 and 8 in the SEC. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, they went yeah. undefeated in their non league. They beat North Adams. They swept North Adams. Or not North Adams, but uh, Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. So, I, I think say. that was the first match. And Notre Dame took. Uh, Took South Webster to the brink, there, right? And their mat that was and that was towards the end of the mm-hmm. year too. Yeah, so I mean, this the Huntington team's a good team. That's the game that uh, Jack Gluckner from, from mm-hmm. the Gazette was. Uh, I was like, why is he not posting a final? Oh, it's because the fifth set was like twenty eight twenty six. <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on? Like yeah. that. <laughs> so it was like, oh, it's. I think he posted it was like fourteen eleven. And then there just wasn't anything after. I'm like, he's always really good about getting these things out. And yeah, it took a little longer <laughs> because it took a long time. But yeah, so that one should be a really interesting matchup because I think they're tight both times. I know mm-hmm. obviously the first time was as tight as you can get. Um, but I, I know our Carson Francis has been really impressed with Nelsonville. Yep. Um, you know, North Adams has some nice players with Borger and uh, Reagan, but um you know, they have not played super well outside of their league. And, you know, we'll see how they match up against the Buckeyes, uh, Green Devils and Buckeyes. That is. That's quite the matchup. That's quite the, probably the, only that's the two. color matchup of the yeah, century. Green and green, green and, and yellow, yellow and brown and orange. Yeah. Yeah. A little brown. You're representing. Yeah. They went 20. Well, they went. Nelsonville, York went 21 and two. Yeah. That's what I mean. 12 it's like, and 0 in the TBC. Yeah, so and and obviously with Alexander and Megs from their side of the TBC yeah. making a run to the district, I mean, I think Nelsonville's got to be looked at probably as the favorite in this district, even though South Southeastern's played really well this year. Um, uh, co-player of the year and Josie Longheed. Yeah, had Log, a great I think year. It's actually it's Logheed. I was always yeah. saying Log, like L O N G. Yeah, it's just L O G. I which, said Logheed, but yeah, I but it. I think at Adina they said Lohi. 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 So like the G was silent. So I like maybe that was on a pronunciation guide. Maybe. Sorry, Josie, if we're saying it wrong. So um, for Nelsonville, their only losses uh, earlier, it was actually their third match was against Warren, mm. who, who, I mean, I mean, whatever. They were I mean, the five Warren, seed. Yeah, Warren went, 20 and, Warren went 20 and four. So take that as you will. And then. Uh, their other loss was a little more interesting. It was a three to two loss at Logan, who finished five or five and seven, fifteen and seven. So yeah. that one went five sets. So maybe just not their best mm-hmm. night. But well, I think I think you need to beat Logan in three. It might have only been three. It may have been four. But um, I know you know fifteen and seven is still pretty solid. Who knows who Logan plays? I know we technically cover them, but like. Mm. That's they little. just they just find who who will actually go to Logan and play them. Well, I know um, they play a predominantly heavy SCOAL schedule. Mm-hmm. I mean, we talked about that in football. How I think six of their games were former SCOAL mm-hmm. teams. Which I mean, you kind of had to figure if they're not going to join a conference, they might as well just play a bunch of non. Because right. <laughs> I think this it it has to get tough scheduling opponents later in the year. Because right, you almost have to match up with their schedule and just say. You know, most like I'll just use the SVC for example. Every team plays three non league and then it's league the mm-hmm. rest of the year. But in pretty much every other league, you have like just some random week. Like for Waverly, they played at Mount Healthy the other right. day, or um, I can't remember who it was. Uh, Somebody Menford played, and Logan played yeah, in week eight. Yeah, like yeah. just like some random week down the stretch, they'll play a non league game. That's kind of what Logan has yeah. to do, especially past you know week four or five when teams are mm-hmm. predominantly playing league schedules. So yeah, good uh, thing for them. They will be in a league next year. So I would assume that we are will. they, are yeah, they, they'll be in the OCC. OCC. Yeah. That's going to be, that's going to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, going to be the, tough. The good thing for them, they have the facilities. 
they do. Yeah. So isn't isn't um, uh, Taze going into the OCC as well? Yeah, they'll be in the same division. So Whew. so positive they can probably beat each other every once in a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. But you know what? It's if you want to make if you want to get. If we're going to give picks, probably yeah. taking Nelsonville yeah. and Southeastern as my two. But mm. like you said, Huntington has been impressive. They've had mm. some kind of similar to how we've talked about Hillsborough and football. They've had some impressive losses and some pretty impressive wins over. Like I would say if you threw Huntington in the shack, they probably don't lose a league game. Right. Yeah. Or if you throw them in the SOC one, probably don't lose a league game mm. either. It's just they're in a pretty good conference and uh, they're in a good area where even the non-league teams they're playing are pretty strong. So Yeah, and uh, Casey Carroll is real good i think she was she might have been third in the all sec voting towards like player of the year maybe fourth uh, i think she might have been behind cut right but um you know just a, a really good player really talented player for huntington and they have a good attack and you know that should be that should be a fun night of volleyball on i believe that one will be on tuesday yeah, yeah 20, that one's tuesday yeah. or no that one is not 25th tuesday. that's yeah, that's the wednesday, wednesday. yeah, yeah. I think, and I do think the non-league success of the Shack was, and I didn't realize Fairfield was a 15 seed. So mm. I think the non-league success was taken into consideration yeah. pretty heavily. Is North Adams doesn't lose a league game, but they finish three or three one. They finish as the 10 seed in the tournament. And Fairfield drops to the 15 seed, and they won their division. They won mm. the Shack too. So uh, yeah, I, I mean, anything can happen, right? I mean, you just got to string three sets together and mm-hmm. you can get a win, but. Uh, I would probably take Nelson. I think Nelsonville has shown, especially outside. I mean, they're twenty-one and two, right. right? So it's not like they just dominated the TBC. They've done fairly well outside as well. So, yeah, I would, I would project Nelsonville and Southeastern, but we'll see. I yeah, mean, pretty. It should be a fun Saturday here. Down. Uh, well, now it's about six days away. But, yeah, up uh, on the hill. Yeah, not at the downtown gym, which, as we've said, they don't even have. They don't have the lines. <laughs> or yeah. I don't think they have like the holes for the. They uh, probably got rid of them. The yeah. Pole. Yeah. They just said we're not. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, and really, the only time girls play there is the district tournaments mm-hmm. as well. So, uh, but it's really, I mean, their gym up on the hill is probably a top a top it's gym so nice. too. I will say, the home uh, the home bleachers are, are like hilarious. Some of the highest <laughs> bleachers I've ever seen in a high school gym. Yeah, There's got to be like twenty rows. Yeah. In just there. make just. Make two levels. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so high. Because we've streamed we streamed a basketball game, and then that, uh, I think it was only two volleyball games there last year, because I think the one of the games didn't have any of our area teams in it. And, like, both times I was up there, I was like, man, like, I feel like I'm about to fall over <laughs> and just roll down these, roll down these bleachers. But uh, it's a nice place. Uh, Bo's really good about letting us come. And, like, I even know for the West and – uh, Waverly football game in week five, I think it was mm-hmm. that Saturday game. I didn't even say anything to him until like Wednesday, and he was really cool about it. Yeah. So he always is pretty generous with letting us mm-hmm. come, and we've spent a lot of time down there, especially not as much last year, but like two years ago, we were over there for the basketball district mm-hmm. tournament, like probably for six games or right. something. So, uh, yeah, it's always nice going over to Waverly, and we'll just jump into the final uh, district, the Waverly three side. We have all four area teams, Chesapeake, probably the most out yeah. um, as uh, out of these four. It's Willersburg and Chesapeake, and then Adena and Westfall. So we actually have two SVC mm-hmm. matchups here uh, in the district semis. So we're more or less guaranteed to see uh, an SVC, two SVC teams, teams in each district final. And then yeah. uh, obviously TVC, Shack, and then uh, before that it was SOC 2 and... Uh, TVC yeah. and now we have T or excuse me, not TVC SOC two and OVC. And yeah, the just picked the last one standing of the OVC. Um, we didn't talk about them a ton this year, but we did a little bit late in the season. It seemed like they were kind of sneaky coming up on having a nice year, and um, you know Wheelersburg with their only losses being to um, South Webster. They went to Westfall and beat them. Beat North Adams, beat Zane Trace. I know they've uh, played a pretty good non-league schedule, so they earned that two seed. And, you know, Adina, I was kind of surprised, dropped to the five. But, Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've had a really good year overall um, with replacing the talented players that they did at the net last year. They've done a really good job uh, kind of, you know, they, they don't rebuild, they reload. 
um, you know, 35 consecutive sectional championships for Adina is yeah. one of the most ridiculous stats. Like, how do you just not get upset at some point? Like, I, I get that they're always just, you know, really talented and, you know, really well coached, but like 35 straight years of just not getting upset in the sectionals you is think crazy. it would just at least once. Yeah, somebody, especially with how good the, how good, is, how yeah. good the area is in, in volleyball. And, you know, Adina just, doesn't matter. No, nope. they just they're in done. the they're in the district every year. Uh, feels like Westfall uh, every you know three or four years makes a run to the regional. So um, wouldn't be too shocking to see them there. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that they did not beat Adina either time this year, but the last time they they played them pretty tough in a couple of the sets. I think Adina kind of ran away with the third one, but um, you know that's that's a talented team over at Westfall. Um, I think that match will be pretty interesting. I think Adina probably wins it again. Um, Did you look at the Wheelersburg? I know we were talk, kind of talking about <laughs> Adina and Westfall, but did you look at the Wheelersburg and West Union box score? I did not, but I bet it's... West Union never got to 10 points. Like total? No, well, they get total. Oh, okay. 25-8, 25-7, 25-6. That's rough. Just dominated that yeah. sectional final. Uh, but Wheelersburg, a two-seed. Chesapeake, an 11-seed at... 17 and 6 so they had a pretty yeah 17 and 6 one. is the 11 seed in division 3 is yeah. crazy so like where Derek put that tweet out I saw someone replied the other day about how good division 3 is and you know I know Derek wasn't saying it to slight division 3 mm -hmm. like he was just saying like you know this is how good division 2 is but like Chesapeake 17 and 6 in an 11 seed right <laughs> so um and it was kind of like Fairland had like five losses and was a 10 and, seed. Yeah, and two of their losses were to Fairland. They had one to Gallia. They had a 3-0 loss to Menford, which is a little concerning considering yeah. what just happened to Menford right. against, uh, who was it, Federal Hawking that beat yeah. them. So it was either Federal Hawking or, or Megs. Or Megs. I, don't, I think it was actually, I think it was Megs. Uh, and then they also had a loss to Venton County, and that was their six. So Yeah, so um, I think I think it's probably going to be Willersburg Adina. Yeah, I mean um, that's that would be the the favorites. I would yeah, say that would be shocking to see Wheelersburg and Adina play in in deep in the tournament. Yeah, could <laughs> see volleyball. Chesapeake and Westfall. Yeah, Westfall could see Chesapeake and Westfall. In the yeah, a rematch of the 2014 uh, district semifinals in baseball. Really? Yeah. How do you know that? Oh, you that was my Westfall. last. Yeah, that was my last uh, time we got to the districts. We lost in the sectional final the next year, and that was. That was my uh, I bid adieu. Yes. I had to break out my French there. But, yeah, so I, I think that's – I think for me, if I'm – if, you know, I had to pick the winners, I would go South Webster, Southeastern, Wheelersburg. And that's just without seeing Nelsonville. South so. Webster, Southeastern, Wheelersburg? Yeah, that would be my three picks. All right. I would, I don't know. I, I, I'm not as educated in volleyball to make like. I'm not either. That's why. <laughs> that's why I said I'm, I don't know. On I don't, I don't feel much. I have the authority to make like picks that matter. Mm -hmm. But just by looking at box, I mean, I would probably take South Webster, Wheelersburg, but that Waverly too. I, I think that could, I think really like any of those four teams mm -hmm. could potentially make it out. I mean, I know. Nelson I'm, I'm really interested in the Nelsonville North Adams score just to see, because we don't outside of the, the couple losses Nelsonville has, we don't really have a, a real tight look on what they've done yeah. uh, by comparison to some of the other schools. And like some of the other schools around here have played North Adams. Um, and maybe we'll get a better idea of it from there. Get a good look. And I think we said that is the Wednesday. That is Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday is Wheelersburg, Chesapeake, Adena, Westfall. And then Monday is South Webster, Alexander and federal hockey and Megs. Oh, should be good Lancers. Or Marauders. Pretty much the same thing. Makes oh, me, uh, yeah. Mega, yeah, I was trying to... I, I love... So, we had a... We had a... You know, we would always work for Mr. Mace whenever mm. we would do the district tournaments. And uh, whenever I was a senior, I think... It might have been my junior year. We were working out at Ross County Park for the Division Two. They had they held tournaments out they there? They had Division Two tournaments. That yeah. place is like a ghost town right. now. Yeah, and it was kind of then, too. But... Um, you know, we were there and for some reason, like, and I, like, I'll do the announcing out of the VA now, which if you had to listen to my voice, sorry, but, um, 
back then, like I was the only one that knew what Megs' mascot was. And like how to say it or just you, what it was. I just knew what it was. I didn't know how to say it. Um, but Mark Trainer's son, Chris, who was my oh. age, Mark Trainer, who's the voice of the Shermans over at Uniota, his his son was a year younger than me, and I was like, Hey, you can do the PA. He was like, All right. And then like he butchered Marauders the entire day. <laughs> It was like, it was not on purpose, but it was just How like, was he saying it, it was like mar- Marauders, mar- Marauders, <laughs> Marauders. I don't know what a Marauder is. It's pretty much a Lancer Cavalier. Well, I don't know what a, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. I, say, I don't know what a Lancer, I don't know what a Lancer is either. All right. So we'll just jump into division four now. I think these games are actually at Southeastern as well. Uh, the first one, th- yes. this is extremely, I say extreme. This is the exact same as division two, at least for us. As it's Southern, and that's Racine and Trimble. Oh, I thought I was going to. Oh, waiting. Gloucester. No, I was just waiting to see if I got. If oh I yeah, got you got Racine, Racine right? Uh, Southern and Trimble, and then Notre Dame and Waterford. So two TVC Hawking teams, actually three. I think Trimble's in there yes. as well. So three TVC Hawking teams, and then one SOC one school in Notre Dame. Um, don't know much about Southern and Trimble. Yeah. Don't know much about Waterford, although all three of those teams are in the same conference. Right. So yeah, it'd probably be pretty easy to get a grasp on them. But, I mean, Notre Dame has been a force in D4 for quite a while. So, I mean. I know Southern's had a really good season. I, um, you know, I know Notre Dame probably got seeded down a little bit just because of a couple of losses, like maybe the Huntington loss. I think they just had more losses than Southern did. Um, but. You know, it's they're a good team, very good team. They mm-hmm. they have a lot of depth of uh, athletes that can make different things happen. I think Bree Hicks has been really impressive this year. So I mean, it wouldn't surprise me to see Notre Dame make a run. Uh, the Southern Tornadoes eighteen and two. Yeah, I was going to say Southern wins the league. So it's actually kind of funny because uh, Southern beat Trimble both times. And then Trimble and Southern beat Waterford both times. So Southern goes nine and zero in the league. Trimble seven and two, and then Waterford six and four. I'm not really sure how they have one extra win in there, but uh, yeah, I've never understood. Well, how you can I have... think Southern probably has one extra game that just oh, doesn't get uploaded. Yeah. And Trimble only had nine two, and some of the school like South Gallia is zero and five, and Eastern is one and six. <laughs> here's here's one thing I will say for Notre Dame is. One of Southern's losses was to Nelsonville, which obviously we've we just discussed Nelsonville's a good team. Uh 25-18, 25-7, 25-16. So um That's a little Yeah, that's kind of concerning. That's a little insight into yeah. how good Nelsonville York is. Yeah, the twenty five seven is is kind of crazy in that. Um so you know it's it's one of those um you know, they also lost to Logan in five. Uh, and I knew they beat Jackson. They beat Jackson in four last or two weeks ago. Um, but yeah, it's uh, they're a good team. Um, Notre Dame, I think. I think Notre Dame's got an excellent chance to uh, get a win here in the or in the district and make a run to the regional. Mm-hmm. But you know, that's that's why they play the games, right? And those are all at Southeastern as well. So uh, D two and D four both at those, Southeastern. Those TVC Hawking people are probably gonna be real real pumped about uh, that's having that's to go all the way far. there yeah. yeah d2 d4 southeastern all the d3 districts are at waverly and we will have those hopefully on live stream this saturday yeah. um and i'll say this if you are a media person and you're like i might go to southeastern go to southeastern mm-hmm. like i know leonard uh steyer retired but, oh, did he? Yeah, he retired at the end of last school year. So, um, but man, they run a great tournament over there. Yeah, um, they do. They have the best uh, hospitality room there is, mm-hmm. uh, and just super nice people. And you know, so Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday out there. Mm-hmm. So I'm or no, uh, yeah, Monday, yeah, Wednesday, the district Saturday. finals are on sex. I know for volleyball, the di- all, all the divisions play district finals the same day. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's uh, it's definitely a place to get to if you're a media member and you're yeah. kind of up in the air on get where you're going to go. Get bang for your buck. Get, yeah. get, well, it'll be two district finals at Southeastern and then three uh, at Waverly. Yeah. So it should be a fun. And I think there's some soccer finals on Saturday Yeah, I'll be well. I'll be back to cover soccer over at Jackson, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Yeah, but before that, we'll jump into cross country and recap the 
Division Two, Division Three, and yep. yeah, just Division Two and Three girls and boys cross country uh, district final results. Yeah. So uh, first off, I don't get it. Nice. So yesterday, and you know, this is not just because you know Union does well at a lot of these things, but like. We're from Uniota, so we know people from there. Uh, the Uniota coach put out that they were district runner-up. They finished fourth in both. So I, I know they have two races, but it's all in one. So I'm going to apologize in advance for if technically some of these people that finished second individually were technically district champions. Mm. And especially, well, and then also in Division Three. I don't know. Like I don't I don't know if I don't know if they had two technically two races. I just know it was in division two. Was Garrett at either of these, do you know? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm sure he probably was, but I was very locked into a certain football game yesterday. <laughs> and if you're wondering if it was Michigan, Michigan State to see if they would cover the over, it was that. <laughs> Did they? Yeah, they scored with eight seconds left. Nice. They were they were going to run the clock out, and then Michigan State took a real big cheap shot. So then Michigan just went and scored on the next play with eight seconds left, uh, um, and that was how they covered. But um, yeah, so district two meet recap uh, division two boys for sure. I know Fairfield Union won the boys. Uh, they were the number one overall winner. Sheridan finished second. Uh, so I believe they also were district champions. So uh, runners up were Marietta and Unietta on the team side. So like where it's two races, I don't know how many teams actually advance onto the regionals. Mm-hmm. We'll have a better idea of that next week mm-hmm. with, you know, when we see the regional results, right. but uh, top five individuals, the winner for sure was Andrew Walton from Fairfield union. So that's where I'm like, I don't know if like the, the second place kid from Marietta, I don't know if he technically wins. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's, the, that's the confusion part for me. Um, but Charles Putnam from Marietta was second. Tate Ruthers from Sheridan was third. Nathan Phillips from Fairfield union was fourth. And then Christian Rindle from Fairfield Union was fifth. That's how I know they won for sure because they just utterly dominated the race. Uh, their Two top kids in the top five, three, all top three. Sorry, yeah. I was three crazy. in the top five. Yeah, three in the top five. Is that what you said? What? That, no, I no. said five. Okay. Yeah, so three in the top five, all juniors also. So they had a senior that finished eleventh, uh, but uh, Hillsborough's Corbin Winkle and UDS Caden Larue also finished in the top ten. There were some Sheridan and Marietta kids as well, but um, just kind of giving our kids that we cover uh, more of the attention on that. Um, Division two girls district champions were Athens and once again Fairfield Union. Uh, the runners up were Uniota and Sheridan. Top five overall were, were from Athens, Sophia Soloso, Solosi. Um, I just know that, like, Uniotis Cameron Walker is awesome. Like, she finished second. And uh, Sophia Solosi. Z- I bet the S is silent. Yeah. Zalosi. Zalosi, yeah. I think so. Um, won by, like, 30 seconds. Like, and Cameron Walker's awesome. Like Cameron Walker's probably going to finish in the top 10 this year as a sophomore. Like both are sophomores. Um, yeah. So Walker finished second. Like once again, like I don't know if she technically wins yeah. a district title or not, but uh, Anna Conrad from Fairfield union was third. Landis Corgan from Athens, also a sophomore was fourth and Maddox Bigham from Circleville was fifth. So um, for sure, all of those kids go on to the regionals. I, I believe it may be the top 20, but once again, I don't want to, say for sure and Mm -hmm. i've asked before i've been told before i've forgotten before so just to be completely honest on that uh then we go to division three boys district champions and this is once again this is where like i don't know if there's two races rock hill won the district north adams finished fourth um then a couple teams outside of our area were second and third so north adams may have gotten runner up as well, but individually, top 10, Landon Air from White Oak won it. Uh, only a junior. I, I, no, it's the second time he's won it. It may have been his third. Uh, Ryan Rich and Dollar, SVC champion from Medina. He finished second. 
Um, also in the top 10, Weston Blair from White Oak. He finished sixth. Seth Ham from Dawson Bryant finished eighth, only a freshman. Nixon. From where? Dawson Bryant, Colgrove. There you go. Oh, I'm not calling it Colgrove. It's Dawson Bryant, the school. It's got a lot of hyphens in there. Uh, Nixon Savely from Rock Hill finished ninth. And Connor Darnell from Manchester finished tenth. Heck of a point guard also for the Greyhounds. Mm. Uh, on the girls' side, district champions were Huntington. Uh, second place was West Union. Third place, South Webster. And fourth place was North Adams. In the top ten, individually, uh, Samantha Sees from Peebles won it. Uh, second was Brandy Schuler from Eastern Brown. Laura Ham from Dawson Bryant, Colgrove, Colgrove, Dawson Bryant, whichever, was third. Adina's Vanessa Conley was fourth. Addie Brown from Oak Hill, our first Oak Hill mention of the of the year, uh, finishing fifth. Marley Kreischer from South Webster was seventh. Emma Hurst from Manchester was ninth, and Rachel Lute from South, or Huntington was tenth. So, yeah, so you probably got a chance to see Connor Darnell. Over, I think it was the East. East. Was it where those yeah. games were at last year? Yes, yeah. sir. Was that the seven? That wasn't the seven. Uh, no, that, that wasn't was... the seven. It was the three games I did where I did. Uh, it was Peebles at West Girls. Then I drove over to East, and it was not as fast as I thought it was going to be. They they had uh, they, they played the JV game, which I thought the JV game was supposed to start at four, but it started at five. And uh, it was Manchester at East. And then the late game was North Adams at Menford, which was a district final matchup uh, Mm -hmm. preview. And thankfully for that, that was a three-game night. So that one, by the time I got to Menford, it was right as the game was getting ready to start. So I was – I slept a lot that Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. All right. So if – Uh, regionals this week and uh, hopefully we'll get to talk about more kids getting a chance to you know a win a regional and b have a chance to run at state at uh fortress obits i will say the golf tournament wraps up like way Uh quicker than any other i mean the state tournament's done before pretty much any other sport even gets the district i mean they they don't mess around with golf i would say it's probably because like the, the courses the, turn the, and stuff well yeah. And like well yeah and like the regular season of golf doesn't last right. nearly as long as any of these other uh, yeah fall uh, sports uh when i first took over the sports zone website like i got a i remember i got an email one of the few aaron lee master shout out uh former paints working great but uh zane trace coach is like awesome on getting results out and i got one on like august 6th like I'm like, what in the world is this? I forgot yeah. that it started so early. All right, so if we're all wrapped up with yeah. cross country, we can jump into boys soccer now. We have D2 and D3 tournaments to talk about. We'll start with one a little more local to us, at least in terms of where they're being played with the two districts at Zane Trace. The Zane Trace 1 district is Athens and Fairland and then Fairfield Union and Gallia Academy, four teams that have had pretty solid regular mm-hmm. seasons i'm assuming athens was uh, either the one or two uh, so they were the two this is where marietta was able to pick where they wanted to be so um yeah so athens was the two seed fairland was the 10 seed they actually win a sectional for the first time in school history nice only problem for them a to play Athens, have to play Athens <laughs> but it's when they were division two if they were division three I think they'd have a better chance to you mm-hmm. know win a game here but uh definitely a tough matchup for the Dragons but you know what you got to do it <laughs> yeah if you're going to make a run you got to do it at some point so kudos to them for making that first ever run um and then Fairfield Union 15 two and one and guy got me 11 three and four uh just really good teams and like Fairland's the only team in Division Two, that doesn't have ten or more wins, and they were nine, six, and two. So, still a good season. Fair, or Athens fourteen, one and four. So, just outstanding records across the board. Now, this is where it's kind of strange. Athens and Fairland will play, I believe, at Logan. They'll play the late game at Logan. Oh, really? That's not at Zane Trace. It is not. So no, the, the final is at Zane Trace. Trace. Now they they changed it because Zane Trace is Division Two this year. So, whereas Zane Trace, you know, if they get to the district final, they'll still play at home, but they didn't want them to play the semi and the final at home. Yeah, that makes Um, sense. So, two of the semis are at Logan, 
one of which is Athens and Fairland. Now, Fairfield Union and Gallia Academy are actually at Chillicothe. Okay, so they, um, they'll get a nice place to, I mean, that's a nice yeah, place to play. Yeah, it's a good good field, good good setting, um, and that'll be on Tuesday. I think, I think this really just kind of goes towards Athens and Fairfield Union to play again. They played early in the year with Athens winning, um, but man. Fairfield Union has been playing really They've well. Kind of, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Caleb Redding's had a great year. Mm-hmm. I mean, historical year for that matter. He's claimed, I think, the assists, both the single season and career assists mm-hmm. and points records yep. over there. They pick up uh, an MSL title with uh, the win over, um, not, but they tied Bloom and right. they had the win over, over Taze. Uh, Taze yeah. And obviously, Taze beat Bloom, so they were the only, they, they never suffered a loss. Now, they had one non win, but. Right. It was good enough to get the MSL title. They draw the three seed. They pick up a win over Alexander in the sectional final. and They pounded Alexander. <laughs> like, after Alexander pounded New Lexington 7-0 yeah, in the yeah. sectional semi. Yeah, so, um, you know, for Fairfield Union, I feel like they're playing really good soccer right now. Uh, I think with, with how physical they are, I know Athens doesn't like that. Um and Athens has had some not great times at that St. Trace field. So there's a lot of pressure on Athens. I think there's less pressure on Fairfield Union. So my pick in this is actually would be Fairfield Union over Athens in a district final, mm. which would be next Saturday uh, or this coming Saturday, right. which I believe Brock would be covering that. Mm-hmm. Um, Most because, likely. Yeah, I'll be at Jackson that day. But, um, yeah, so I think those are going to be, you know, Maybe the semis aren't going to be the most interesting games because I, I do think that Fairfield Union and Athens are, you know, two very, very good teams. Um, mm-hmm. But you know what? That's why they play in Fairland and Guy Academy have had really good seasons. And well, I was going to say, I and mean, we've talked about Beckett Camden a little bit, and mm-hmm. I'm not sure there's some other names we've dropped yeah. a little bit. For uh, Logan Drummond's a good one. But, I mean, they, it they says, don't give up many goals. No, like, only, only 23 on yeah. the year. And that's through 18 games, so just mm-hmm. a little over a goal a game. And, I mean, they win the OVC, right? They mm-hmm. go 8-0-2. It says a lot when you're a sixth seed that just won their conference. Mm-hmm. So uh should be fun games. And once again, those aren't, which I didn't realize, they're not at Zane Trace. You said Fairfield Union and Gallia is at, at Chillicothe. Chillicothe. And then Athens and Fairland are at Logan. is at Logan. Which is okay. eight. Huge field. Yeah, it's it's pretty large. Yeah, I, f- I forget what the name of it is. Is it just called like the Chieftain Coliseum or something? Or does it have a name? I feel like it has some sort of name, but I think it's I think it has something to do with Logan. So I know they've got the Chieftain Center, which is awesome. Yeah, I've never been in there. It's uh, one of my last games as a freshman coach there. Oh, really? Yeah, we played a tournament. It was supposed to be like an all one day event, but one team like dropped out. And Fort Fry was going to get there like two hours, two and a half hours later. And so instead of us just waiting around, they just said, hey, you want to come back on Monday? So we came back on Monday and played in the Chieftain Center. Had a nice comeback win. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. A little freshman dub. Yeah. All right. So we'll talk about Undefeated, the... Undefeated, baby. Uh, talk about the... Is that what the trophy's for? No, that one... Uh, that was when the league that year that was we went undefeated in the league and what year was that i was 20 oh, 21, 21 so that was my yeah so year. that was the year uh your boy went 29 and 2 coaching jv and freshman <laughs> and uh yeah it's they a were pretty good year yeah they were pretty the decent program. We had like 17 threes one game nice in a freshman game it was the dumbest thing i've ever seen like it was against taze and their coach was like what in the world? <laughs> like that was probably when Zeke was playing JV. And, uh, he was playing freshman. Yeah, that game. I think yeah. we were seventeen or twenty six in the game. It's so stupid. All right, so we'll talk now about the second uh, district that will play their final at Zane Trace. It's Marietta mm. Minford, and then little Roscoe Cup rematch yeah. with Uniota and Zane Trace. Now is that game at Zane Trace? So that one will be at Chilcothy. Okay. Yeah, and which Mary, is good. Is Mary, because, and then is Marietta Menford at Logan? Yes. Okay. Marietta Menford at Logan, um, Unietta Zane Trace at Chilcothy. So it's kind of tough if you're trying to get there and scout because, you know, those aren't technically close to each other. But um, for Marietta, this has to be, like, not ideal. Because if you look at, like, how these teams would have been on max preps, like how they're going to do the max preps rankings next year mm-hmm. on max preps. They, this would have been the one, which is Marietta 
Menford would have been the four. You needed the five. Zane Trace the six. So either way, you're going to play some really good teams coming up. Menford is. Menford just barely got away from Warren to. I don't yeah. know how that. They They're up two a, nothing. I was going to say, yeah. if it was a 2 0 lead and they gave up a goal late, maybe not as much. I'm just looking at the final, but um, I think we've kind of established that. Menford has sort of stubbed their toe a few times this mm-hmm. year, and they're probably a seed or two under what yeah their what they should skill be. level yeah. is. So they're probably one of the better eight seeds. Yeah, they uh, should probably the like tournament. honestly, they should probably be playing either Athens or Fairfield Union, like mm-hmm. where they probably even with that West. Yeah, that was, that was that kind of the thing. bit, and they didn't yeah. even lose; it was just a tie. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think Marietta. Okay, this is what I'll say about Marietta. Marietta absolutely pounded Athens and Uniota. Like, dominated both teams. It's the only time all year Uniota was really, like, utterly dominated. Like, Fairfield Union beat them 4-1, but that game was pretty tight into the last few minutes. Um, but, the, like, but if you looked at Marietta's scores away from Marietta, it's a lot more interesting. At Marietta, they just destroy teams. But when they go on the road, it's not nearly as mm-hmm. destructive. Now, they play really good defense both sides. Um, they don't give up many goals, um, which is kind of where you you think that there would be a little bit more to it. But uh, they do play closer games away from home. So I think Minford has a chance to uh, at least be very competitive, if not make that make Marietta very uncomfortable in that game. Uh, then you need Zane Trace. Zane Trace has been playing really well. Although uh, the Miami Trace score was kind of strange the other day, a 4-2 to two game. Um, you know, with how good Zane Trace has been playing to, to play a moderately tight game with a Miami Trace team that's had a down year. It was a little surprising, but, you know, can they get past that Unita hump? Mm-hmm. Um, it's been... I believe it's been seven years since Zane Trace has beaten Unita. How uh, long? Seven. Oh, okay. I thought you said 17. I no. Like, like, uh, these two have not played in the tournament for 19 years. Oh, because Zane Trace has been D3 for a, good a bit handful of, it, yeah. of years. So. Um, and then Unita uh, you know, beat them the year they went to the state. So it was 2004 uh, was the last time these two played in the tournament. So, um, you know, district semifinal should be a pretty big crowd because it's going to be at Chillicothe. So it's not like either crowd has to go very far. And I was going to say, like, I mean, these teams could meet up when one is like completely just overmatching the other. And it's still going to be a big game mm-hmm. right now when you take a match where they're pretty evenly matched and it's a district semifinal. Right. There's a lot. Now, will this count as a Roscoe Cup game? It does not. Oh, no way. Yeah. I'd be so upset if I was Zane Trace <laughs> and they win and they, now they're probably just happy. Well, they get a different moving. trophy. Yeah. They're yeah. probably just happy they're moving to the district final round, but I'd be a little upset that I don't get to keep the cup after beating the team we play it right. for. I mean, it'd be the same if like, you know, if somehow like, I'll just use Ohio State and Illinois played in, like, the playoffs, which <laughs> yeah. that'll never happen. But if they played in the playoffs, we'd throw down the yellow. Now, you realize those teams haven't played in uh, – now it's been six years. Let's just say it's been a long time. Because they it's 2017, and I think they were scheduled to play the COVID year. Oh, okay. And they got canceled. Uh, but still, like, even if – they had played, they still wouldn't have played for three years, which I mean, I feel like I know they're on the West side, but it's a rivalry trophy. I mean, it's It's a wooden turtle. turtle. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, We'll Um, have to get, I got so pumped when I saw Florida Rosedale yesterday and that, and that classic between Minnesota and Iowa. Um, (laughs) but yeah, I I think, fair catch. I think it's a, uh, you know, it's, you know, when I watched them play last week, um, they looked more organized um, than when I had previously seen them. So if they can keep that together, uh, they are finally healthy. Um, you know, Johnny Wetzel, who had a nasty concussion, was was back the other day, and he gives them an extra dimension that you know they had been missing for the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, and Owen Link returned to the lineup, so those are two big. One ZT will hopefully have Reese Allen. And Reese really Allen is back. For the whole course of the game. Yeah, so um, both teams should be about as healthy as they could be at this point in the season because mm-hmm. uh, you're going to have some nicked up things. And obviously, Reese Allen's still working his way back from that right. nasty yeah. knee injury. But, um, yeah, he's been able to play for the last couple of weeks, and that gives them an extra dy- uh, dynamic dimension. So that should be interesting. I, I, I 
I won't pick that one just because, you know. There's a little Homer yeah. involved. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, man, I think Menford's got a chance against Marietta. I think that's, um, you Marietta know, if, if you would have told me that, bef- like, before the tournament, I would have said no. But then when I really dug deep into Marietta's stuff, I think – they are more susceptible away from home. And what I've also been told is their field is very small. So they're going to have to go on the huge field at you Logan. Know, at Logan. So uh, that should be interesting. So I think whoever wins between you and Zane Trace, um, it's not as much of a dead end as I thought it was a couple of mm-hmm. weeks ago. So uh, I think that's going to be definitely an interesting, uh, interesting group out there. Yep, Marietta has allowed 14 goals in 17 games. They've scored 89, so they're scoring 6.3 goals for mm-hmm. every goal they give up. So that's that's just about as good yeah, it was as like, it gets. It's like 33 to 9 at home is what their score is. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's they're on the road, 33 to 9. And it's, so what is that, 50, 50, 56 six to five. 5? Yeah, yeah, so more dominant at home. But, yeah, so definitely will be uh, – Interesting there. Jump down to Division Three now. Both of these will be held, well, at least the finals will be held at Jackson. For Jackson 1, it's Northwest versus, well, let's just say Northwest taking on Lynchburg Clay and then South Webster and Ironton St. Joe. Those are 14, well, Lynchburg not as much, but definitely Northwest, Webster, and Ironton St. Joe. Those are three teams we've talked about quite a bit mm-hmm. this year. Yeah, Lynchburg plays a really tough schedule, so... You know, obviously Northwest and South Webster do as well, but uh, Lynchburg does a really good job of scheduling up. So they're going to have some losses along the way. And you can kind of tell that the other schools, def- they get the respect uh, for scheduling like that as they were a seven seed, even though I believe they came in under 500 to the seeding meeting. So, um, you know, I think Northwest is going to take that game because they've you know played really well throughout the year. But also Caleb Lewis has been just, Absolutely just dis- disgusting this year for the mm-hmm. Mohawks. Uh, South Webster's played really well late. They beat Uniota um, in the last game of the regular season for the Shermans. Uh, Ironton St. Joseph, 14-2-1. and one. Um, Maybe not the strongest schedule, but they've done a really good job playing the team, you know, taking care of the teams on their schedule. Um, with Medinger, Neal, Rowe, I think that they – have an attack that South Webster is going to have to respect South Webster. I think their physicality is going to make the difference in that game because those dudes are big and physical. So, um, you know, if I just had to pick it, I, I would say South Webster against Northwest. I think it'll be uh, a couple of interesting games though, because Lynchburg well coached they're a good, solid team. And, you know, I think kind of the same thing with, St. Joseph. No, I mean, it's sort of an underdog story right. for Ironton, no matter how good they are. Yeah, just they've got like 20 little, boys. Yeah, yeah, just because of how just overall just undermanned they are. I, I, mean, I believe when in that interview I had with Brady Medinger, I think he said it was like seven freshmen out of there, like 14 players. So, like, that's it's just crazy. They how just, small is their actual, like, not student size, but how small is the school? I, I don't know. Like I'm not sure it can't be very big. No, it has to be because like I believe the size it, of it. It's got to be like four classrooms. No, that's <laughs> like, what I'm saying. Like like at a, at the max. I think for St. Joe, anything that they can do is just you know a big positive for them because it's it's a pretty cool story for me. Like you know seeing how the school like the student numbers in, yeah that they typically are pretty successful across you know whatever sport they're competing in so no, i um, think it'll be interesting to see south webster and uh northwest, northwest. for a third time because yeah those are teams we've talked i mean obviously you have to play menford and uh wheelersburg twice every year which right. makes it a little more difficult but i think those are two teams where if you maybe threw them in a different conference they probably win the league mm-hmm. or, even go undefeated. Now for South Webster, obviously they beat Northwest three to two the first time and then two to one the second time. So the, the, um, they probably the, got a little chip on their shoulder for being seated below. Them then, <laughs> yeah. Too. Yeah. How the saying go, I don't know exactly how it goes, but it's like hard to beat them three times. Right. I don't know how the exact quote goes. Yeah. But. I think it's just hard to beat a team three times in a season. Right. Yeah. So. Which is 
I mean, I think it's hard to beat any team one time in a season. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, and, and depends on how much better you are than the other team if it's hard to beat a team. Well, and, and it's been a one-goal game each time. Right. Like three, so, two, two, one. So, I mean. I, I imagine it has not been easy to beat them either time no. at that point. So, no. But, I mean, both of those teams got to take care of business mm-hmm. in the district semifinal first, right? Because Lynchburg Clay grabs a share of the shack. That was the three-way tie with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was them, North Adams, and I think Fairfield was the other team. Yeah, in the top and the three there. So no, Fayetteville. All oh, Fay- Fayetteville, man. They're yeah, they, they're just your not. boys. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, Fayetteville. The, so the Rockets. Okay, so we there's some interesting scheduling on this as well. Northwest and Lynchburg will be played at Zane Trace on Wednesday, and Southwestern and Ironton St. Joseph will be played at Portsmouth West which I didn't know was actually hmm. an option, but hmm. good, you know? Probably a little closer. Yeah, but there's some, but yeah, Northwest and Lynchburg at St. Trace, and yeah, wait till you really hear the last one at St. Trace, because that one's not close. It was South Point, North Adams. At St. Trace. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. For yeah. South Point, that is just awful. Yeah, like South Point and... North Adams at West makes sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or just, I mean, anyway, I mean, throw them at, put them at Wheelersburg or something. Yeah. I know those are pretty close, but uh, what a scheduling is very interesting. Yeah. And it, like, I was very close to being a part of doing it, and I'm glad that I was not. Um, I was like, I was on like a list for it, and then when sadly when Mr. Mace got sick, it ended up going somewhere else. And so now. That I'm here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we'll look at the final uh, division, or I should say the final district in Division Three for us. The second one at Jackson Wheelersburg versus Valley, who's six, nine, and two, and then South Point and North Adams on the other side. Now, it's going to be weird to say this. It's been a heck of a fall for Valley. No, they've, like, I mean, because, wow. okay, so their football team made the playoffs at three and seven, yeah. which. You know, might sound crazy, but like they had to beat a team that was over 500 to get in. Mm-hmm. They almost beat a Grandview Heights team that was, I think, finished either seven and three or uh, eight and two. And like from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, they got so much better because they, they just don't have very many seniors that are out playing anything. No, I don't think they had a senior in their, uh, in their starting rotation. Yeah. And then in soccer, they started off 0 and 4 playing all of those loaded teams in the SOC too. And I believe they only had two seniors. Um, I know they, I mean, they graduated a ton. Yeah. So, so then they're, they're, they're starting slow and then they're playing all these young kids and they make it back to the district. So, I mean, at least to the same spot as last year. So kudos to them. I I think this is probably where it ends for them. They got a, extremely about as yeah. tough as a matchup as you can get right wheelersburg is 16 one and one is uh the one seed so it's 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 gonna be tough yeah and i think south point and north adams is gonna be an interesting game as well so um i think wheelersburg probably takes this district probably mm-hmm. without a ton of problems but just depends on their health also and really and we'll talk about the girls side of things a little bit later but what a year it's been for south point i mean a pretty historic year football wise mm-hmm. first non-losing season since like 2013 i yep. think it was and i mean their boys team grabs the four seed in the tournament i think they had a relatively decent volleyball year. i can't remember yep. off the top of my head and then i think girls soccer they just about mm-hmm. won the obc i think they finished second i don't know mm-hmm. and i think we'll we'll talk about it here that was rock a hill bit. on that but yeah and then their boys it's gonna be weird because i know they've had a team for at least 25 years um mm-hmm. but this is the best year I can remember for their boys program. I'm sure they've made it to the district before, but you know, this is one of their better years in a long time. Um, and you know, it's, you know, maybe we should give the OVC some more due there because they had three teams get to the district level between Gallia, South point and Fairland. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe they'll have a little better chance. I, 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 I like their matchup with North Adams. I think, um, Cody Hessler is outstanding for, the Green Devils, but I think South Point, you know, if they're able to uh, put together some passing um, and string together some things, I think they've got an excellent chance to win that game. But, uh, yeah, so it should be Who did you pick? I would take, I, you know, without seeing South Point, I'm just going to throw it out. I'm going to take the pointers. Okay, I'll take North Adams. Yeah. Take the Green Devils. You want me to pull down the sign and we can point to some pointers? <laughs> so, 
on the Mel Gilly Cuddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so North South South Point, I'm assuming, is like right here. Yes. And then North Adams is probably like in here. Uh, it's a little more like up in up, up here. In this yonder. Yeah. yeah. If you drive down to, uh, I, mean, I know where the North Adams. It's by, I mean, I know it's by the North Adams like hospital thing. Yeah. I passed it on my way to Cincinnati. Yeah. But... You just go down 32, and it's yeah, beautiful yeah. Seaman, Ohio. <laughs> All right, so we'll jump into the girls tournament now unless you have anything extra you want to toss into the boys tournament. I know these have been relatively vague previews, but it's just there's so many games. Right. <laughs> so, um no, but I think those games at Jackson next Saturday are going to be outstanding no matter who it's going to be. Um going to be some really good teams. You know, personally for me, I just hope it's the best teams whoever it ends up right, being. No. Uh well, well we, like Withersburg we like Wheelersburg won a district final last year, seven nothing, at Jackson. So like, I don't want to see that. Right. I want to see them. Yeah, see more competitive games. Um, yeah, but I think whoever it ends up being, will, you know, give it all they got, and then we'll see from there. All right. So we'll jump into now the girls' side of things with Division Two and Division Three. We'll start with Division Two. These ones are the finals that will be played eventually at Logan and the. Logan 1 district. We have Fairfield Union versus Warren and then Circleville and Sheridan. Yeah, Fairfield Union is very tough. Um, but with with Warren, they're super physical. Um, I think it's a, you know, Fairfield Union beat them 5-0 early in the season, but it's still probably not the matchup they want to see there. Just for a physicality aspect, I know in 2020, 20? Yeah, 2020. Um, Warren actually upset Fairfield Union in the district mm-hmm. semis. So, um, you know, it's it wouldn't be the first time. But I, I think this Fairfield Union team is just too good. Um, but, like, with Circleville and, and Sheridan, I mean, Circleville's you know, played really well this year. It seems like they're uh, more on the bounce back, like, because they've been a really good program for a long time, mm-hmm. and they were down for a couple of years, but it seems like they're uh, – very much on the way back up. Um, you know, Sheridan is a newer program, and they are already to the district level. They were a top – were they the four? They may have been the five. Um, but either way, they're – Yeah. They're the – they were at least a top five seed, which is really impressive for a fairly new program in Sheridan. So uh, kudos to them, um, even though, once again, we don't really cover them. But I, I think this is Fairfield Union's district – uh, to win, um, I think that Circleville was three, Sheridan was five. So Circleville must have been the four because I think they they Circleville was three. Well, they put the they had to have got that wrong because well, I'm just telling. Yeah, I'm I know. Just read, I'm just reading what I don't trust. I don't <laughs> I'm just trust. reading what is on. Yeah, the... I don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so with Fairfield Union, I, I just think you know defensively they do such a good job. They have yeah. some young goal scorers. I, I still think, you know, you're going to see something big from Claire Brown at some point. And, um, yeah, I think they're going to march to another district championship. Yeah, they have Jackson listed as the three. As yeah, well, so, so Jackson that's... should be the three. Yeah, uh, because know, Union was the six for sure. I know we just talked about South Point a little bit, but what a year <laughs> Fairfield Union has had too. I mean, they're currently in the district semifinals for volleyball, and then boys and girls soccer have just been yeah. great. Well, and then boys and – well, their boys won a district in – cross country their girls were uh runner up so i mean just an outstanding you know i i feel like there was a long time where field union didn't do a whole lot athletically and mm-hmm. then the last 10 years has been a complete 180 yeah. in that and they've been very impressive uh you know especially in soccer but you know in fair <laughs> volleyball and obviously cross country and you know their football team was very close i think they were like the 17 they're like one yeah like very close to making it they might have finished over 500. Um, I know we talked about them a couple of times on the show. Mm-hmm. So they're yeah, in a so, tough league, which we'll talk about right. this Friday. But uh, yeah, Thursday. so it was a good uh, good overall season so far for Fairfield Union and Athletics, and I think it continues throughout the winter as well. So the second district at Logan, it's Marietta, Athens, Jackson, and Unioda. Marietta, the one seed in boys and the two seed in the girls tournament. Yeah, and I feel like this is going to be a little bit similar. To what I what I kind of said about Marietta earlier was they were, you know, very good at home. 
not so much on the road, but, um, you know, and Athens is a very, another very physical, tough team. Um, should be an interesting matchup there. I think Marietta probably takes that game, but, um, you know, one of those things you, you got to play. Yeah. Um, now these games are on Monday. So, uh, Jackson and Unioto will be at Zane Trace. I think this is where we said Brock would yeah. most likely be. Yeah, and Circleville Sheridan is at Zane Trace. And then Fairfield Union, Warren at Logan, Marietta Athens at Logan, which actually makes sense. All of those make sense. Yeah, good, good job. job. Yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> good job. Um, you know, the only one would be like Sheridan would be like, uh, we're a little closer to Logan, but they're not that far from Zane Trace either. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, and I think that Jackson Unioto game is very interesting because Unioto is finally healthy. Um, Jackson beat him one nothing earlier in the year. Jackson's really good. Uh, mm-hmm. Maddie Walburn's awesome in goals. Cindy Carpenter's done a really good job goal scoring. I think she didn't even score the other day in their uh, sectional final win. Um, first FAC title ever. First league title since I think it was 2016. Mm-hmm. So best team they've had in the last five six years. And I would. I would guess longer just because yeah. that, that 15, one and two is just really impressive. They're a well-coached team. Um, you know, I, you know, can say the same with the Unioda, you know, they, Unioda is not going to blow you away with their goal scoring, but they play really smart. They do a really good job defensively. Uh, Maya free does a really good job in goal for them. So I think that game's going to be maybe the tightest one out of all of these, um, you know, once again, it was one nothing the first time. I wouldn't be surprised if it was something like one nothing this time as well. Uh, but I think Merritt is probably the favorite to win that district as well. But um, you know, it's could be could be interesting coming down the stretches. Um, you know, definitely has the experience of playing in those big games as they got to the district final last year, um, which was kind of a sleeper run for them. So, you know, I I think they've got a chance, but. Um, ultimately I would probably take the favorites uh, or the higher seeds in those games with Marietta and Jackson, but, um, yeah, it should be fun to follow Brock's updates tonight. Yep. Monday night. Southern Ohio sports authority. Presented by McDonald's. Well, yeah. We, we McDonald's. We're <laughs> overtime. Presented by, yeah. Presented we got by a, Ohio health. Uh, oh yeah. Ohio health. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So we'll look now to the. Division three tournament for girls. Decent amount of Shaction here as we have Fairfield Shaction. and Eastern Brown in the district semifinal. And then OVC and SOC two with Menford and Rock Hill in the second game. Yeah, not the best matchup for Fairfield. Like to get Eastern Brown who yeah, six nine and three, but I think that was the team that did they beat? Oh, they had a tie, maybe. They with, tied Lynchburg. Yeah. And Fairfield only beat Eastern two to one. So I mean and Eastern just absolutely routed a pretty decent Westfall team in the sectional final the other day. So I, I don't think, you know, as good as Fairfield is, I don't think they're like real giddy with their uh, <laughs> matchups here as, uh, you know, although I'm going to make a bold prediction. The Eastern wins the state final. No, <laughs> not that bold. Now my bold prediction, a team whose primary color is red will win this district. Is Rock Hill? Well, Rock Hills is red. Yeah. Yeah. So is Menford. So is Eastern. So is Fairfield. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's uh, coming from the big brain over here. But yeah, so Fairfield, I think is probably the favorite here. Man, Menford, uh, Lexi Conkle scored her hundredth goal of her career mm-hmm. the other day. So congratulations to her. Thought she'd be close this year, but I didn't know how close she was but when we were doing that game. Yeah. Only a junior. Um, I bet she'll get close to she'll get close to one fifty. I bet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At 49 last year. I think she's over 49 this year. So. Yeah. Yeah. So she's pretty good. Puts it in the net. Yeah. Uh, Rock Hills had a good year. Um, won the OVC. Uh, I did not pick them, but, you know, they won the OVC. Good for them. You picked, did you picked South Point. I picked South Point. Because they, yeah. they won last year, right? Yeah. No, uh, Rock Hill won oh, it last Rock Hill won last but year. But they graduated a really good class. So I thought, you know, maybe they wouldn't do it this year. But they proved me wrong and they had another good season. So uh, shout out to the Red. Ladies, something, yeah, um, you know, but I think Menford probably wins that game. I, I, I think they're a uh, very solid team overall. I think it's probably Menford against Fairfield, which I think could be you know just a ton of athletes, mm-hmm. um, and probably a matchup that you might see in basketballs too. Um, I would like, I would, you know, 
I'd watch Faith Donnelly just play defense on pretty much anybody uh, because she's just very uh, hard nosed and she does that in soccer as well as she leads them in scoring. So, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be a really interesting district tournament over there um, for the Waverly one. Yeah, man. Uh, the Waverly two, we have the defending regional champs and Lynchburg clay taking on Alexander and then Wheelersburg and North Adams. So another shack team, actually two shack teams with Lynchburg and North Adams, TBC, Alexander, SOC two mm-hmm. with Wheelersburg. Yeah. And then, you know, Alexander's one where since they don't have a TBC, they can kind of just go independent and schedule who they want. So sometimes they'll come in with a worse record than you maybe expect, but I think Lynchburg probably doesn't have much issue in that game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Lynchburg just, you know, the Shaq's good in girls soccer and, um, well, and boys soccer, but it's good in girls soccer. And then they go out and schedule all these ridiculous teams in the Mm non-conference. And that's where they go, come in with the 12 and four. And, you know, they play great defense. Jade Massey can really score it. I think they're probably the favorite in that matchup. And then Wheelersburg against North Adams. I watched it three, one earlier. Wheelersburg won over North Adams. I still think that's probably a 50-50 game. I would give the edge to Wheelersburg on a neutral site still. But uh, they are playing really well right now. So I think for Lynchburg, they probably got you know not a you know unfavorable draw because I think they're still going to be the favorite over whoever they play. But uh, with how Wheelersburg's playing right now, I think it's – uh, they're probably the second best team right now mm. in the in the area. Um, you know, they we streamed them one and four two over Menford in that league championship game, and you know they've just been playing really well. Bella Miller's been awesome lately. Yeah. Uh, Hockstedler, uh, Vastine, and you know Crew just it's a it's a team with a lot of different weapons. Yeah, it kind of funnels through two main weapons, but at the same time, they have a lot of different players that can make individual plays and they play really good defense. So mm-hmm. I think um, Lynchburg Clay and Wheelersburg, that'd be about as good of a matchup yeah. as you could draw up. Right. So it'd be a really good matchup, uh, you know, and then, you know, but still North Adams, you know, with uh, Harley Brandon goal, I think they were going to have mm-hmm. a chance against whoever they play. Uh, the grooms, I assume sisters, <laughs> I don't want to, you know, don't want to say for sure, but you know, they look very similar. They're not twins because it's different. Age. Well, hopefully not. I played basketball against uh, a guy who his twin brother graduated a year before him. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, there are some people that like aren't directly twins, but like they might as well be. Yeah. Well, the one that was still in school was not the smartest. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he was a good basketball player. Right. Um, but yeah, the. North Adams, I mean, and Kenley Jones is just you know, one of the toughest athletes in our area. Um, so, I mean, North Adams is going to fight you for all 80 minutes and maybe beyond. So that should be a fun matchup. But I think Lynchburg probably wins this district, but it's not going to go without without a fight for sure. And then all these finals uh, are at Waverly. So. Yes. Uh, and actually, the semis are on Monday. Lynchburg and Alexander and Wheelersburg and North Adams are both at Hillsboro. So Hillsboro have turf? No. They don't. <laughs> Unless they have a separate soccer field from football, but I don't know why soccer. Ooh. It might be the case where, like, at Menford, they had Bermuda grass for a soccer field, potentially. Yeah, but I thought it was required to be on turf uh, once I got to the district. Turf. Yeah, that's strange. Uh, and then Fairfield and Eastern Brown will be at Northwest, and Menford versus Rock Hill will be at Northwest also, so should be some uh, good games on Monday night, tonight. Yeah, and that'll just about do it for our district previews. We'll be able to get a little more in-depth once we have uh, district winners and going on to the regional because yeah. we won't have any episodes in between the district. That That's kind of the tough thing is we won't have any episodes be recorded in between right. the semis and the finals. So we just kind of have to predict who we think we'll make it and then Hopefully by next week, I say hopefully next Monday or whenever we decide to record, we'll be able to review the district finals mm-hmm. and talk about each team's chances in the regional rounds. So, yep. yeah, so should be should be a fun week. Make mm-hmm. um, sure you follow our socials, and hopefully we'll get some some folks out to cover a lot of different games, and should be a fun week for yeah. show. 
for show. And unless you have anything extra to add, I think that's about all we have for no, today. No, I'm, I'm good. Go see Slother House. <laughs> Don't do that. Do not. Unless you like... Three-toed sloths just trying to kill people like... <laughs> Is that what it was like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so good. All right. Well, with that being said, I think that'll just about do it for today's episode of So So Overtime, presented by McDonald's.